Austin, Texas. High up in a university tower, a sniper shoots at unsuspecting victims in the plaza below as scores of students flee. Police have apprehended a lone gunman in an attempt on the life of President Ronald Reagan outside the Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. Six hour standoff with police. William Cruz is accused of a violent murder rampage that killed six people, including two policemen. Jeffrey Dahmer stands convicted of strangling and dismembering 17 young men and boys throughout the greater Milwaukee area. Charged with the raping and killing of a seven-year-old girl in a woman's bathroom. With his life imprisonment for drowning her five children in family bath sentences. For the slayings of his mother. The bludgeoning death of her two young sons. Custody for the stabbing death of his daughter. Three months before the murder. I just told my two daughters. Sir? Yeah. Tell me what what happened. Okay, how I mean what's going on right now? I just freaked out and killed her. Are you on medication? Yeah. What kind of beds are you on, sir? I'm on antidepressants. I have to say, whenever I read in the newspaper of some violent act, one of the first questions I ask is was the person on medications. Virginia Tech or the school shootings or the, um, my first thought is always, I wonder what drug he was taking. There are side effects to the use of drugs and also very damaging and dangerous long-term effects, which psychiatrists often don't consider as being important. They induce violence, they induce self-violence, they induce distortions of reality leading to uh, hallucinations, they induce a whole variety of psychiatric problems which are then typically treated with more psychiatric drugs. We're not talking about a rash, we're not talking about dry mouth, we're not talking about nausea. We're talking about sudden, compulsive, overwhelming suicidal or homicidal urges. We're talking about violent deaths. We're talking about crippling injuries. Psychiatric drugs are rampant in society today. It's become really an epidemic. first drug that they put him on, I uh, did not like it. He had very bad reaction. Um, he, he became a completely different person. He was very, as you would say, aggressive. He became obsessive compulsive, um, paranoid about bad guys, um, afraid of dying. He was started sniffing his hand 20 to 30 times a minute, um, out of control rages. He couldn't think straight, he couldn't act straight. It made him irritable, it made him violent. At one point, he threatened to kill himself and to kill me, and he was only six or seven years old. From the moment that I started taking these drugs and to the moment that I stopped, all that, all that happened in my life was things got worse. Depression got worse, the anger got worse, the outburst got worse. I had no idea what was happening to me. Uh, it's, I would start quivering and shaking. Uh, I would uh, drop onto the ground. Uh, literally, uncon I could not control anything. Within four hours, of taking 25 milligrams of Zoloft, I was standing on a balcony at a church. And again, there was the thinking, I'm going to jump. The psychiatrists have carved out a great niche for themselves in the prescribing of drugs, but if you look at the history of, of treating people for mental and psychological disorders, it's a history fraught with things that don't work. They're not helping people with drugs, and they're not looking out for harming people. They're ignoring the harm that's coming from all of these drugs. We see suicidal thoughts, we see suicide, we see profound depression, mood swings. This is 911, who is this? <laughs> Where is your sister? What is she trying to do, take pills? What? No, my dad told me. Oh my God, help me. You don't want to think that 
that a drug could affect someone's behavior in that way, but it does, it happens, it happens all the time. Suicide is just one in a long list of possible side effects of the medications that the doctors will seldom link to the medication, but instead blame it on the patient. What's the cause of death going to be written? Not going to be written that the drug had anything to do with the death. It's going to be recorded as a suicide. There's not a single psychiatric drug out there that's going to fix a problem. At best, it's going to cover up symptoms. At worst, it might kill you. She went to get the laundry, his laundry, which hangs from a hook in Matt's closet. And instead of finding the laundry, she found her son. By the time he died, he, he was really mutilating himself. He carved hate into his thigh. He had gone into his closet that night, tied a rope around his closet rod, put it around his neck, shut the light off, knelt down. I, I ran back to him, and I touched his back, and I said, no, honey, he's cold, he's gone. I'm as certain as I can be that Selexa killed my daughter. I will always blame my son's death on psychiatric drugs. of significant violent acts, not just suicide, but significant violent acts of murder-suicides uh, in patients who were being prescribed antidepressants for relatively minor conditions, and they then just snapped. The drugs that are used are known worldwide to increase suicidality and increase homicidal violence. Might there be a link between the school shootings or the extremely violent shootings that have occurred in the U.S. and the prescription of certain psychotropic medications? I think the answer to that is a clear yes. The school shootings that have happened here over the last several years in this country, most of the students who engaged in this violent behavior were on psychotropic medications that had been prescribed to them by psychiatrists. Okay. Do you know who done the shooting? No, we do not. Okay. I was lucky I, was, I wasn't shot because I was the only one standing up. My friend Nate got shot in the shoulder. Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Oh. This is there's tonight, nothing like that happens here. This is no. You should be safe at school. It should be a safe place. It's horrible images that you never want to see again in your mind. I was praying to God for someone to come help me. It wasn't just my boyfriend, it was my best friend. It was a nightmare. I didn't think he had a phone call. Whenever a school shooter is taking a drug, it is you know, the, the press don't get the information. If they ask about it, they're told this is private information. So the public is kept in the dark about the drugging of these kids that leads to this violence. You have to ask yourself, how much help can these drugs be to somebody if they start experiencing these side effects of extreme anxiety, a desire to kill themselves, desire to kill others? How, what kind of help is that for the person? Did you see these kinds of incidences in the 1960s or pre-1960? Was anybody shooting up their classrooms? There were guns. We didn't have as many gun control laws then as we do now. No, we didn't. So what's different? The psychotropic drugs, that's what's different. These psychiatrists are, in a sense, crippling people 
at the same time they claim to be treating them. They are mainly just drug pushers. You go on this drug, if it doesn't help, you can try this one. And if that doesn't work, you can try this one. This is one incredible money-generating machine when this is your approach to treating people. It's about making money. It's not about getting people better or helping people in a service industry or, or helping people feel well. More than anything else, even more horrific than all the lives lost as a result of this callous profit seek is the notion that our country is being destroyed. What we see in the homicides and the suicides is only the tip of the iceberg compared to exactly what's happening to people out there. How many deaths have to occur before the public wakes up? Wake up, wake up before it's too late.